At the end of the last drum lesson video I made, I talked about syncopation ideas in 3-4 and 5-4 time signatures. I'm going to talk more about 3-4 now. What I've done is to take material originally written in 4-4 and to rebar or transpose it into 3-4 uh, simply using Finale print music software. Of course, I could have done this by hand using manuscript as well, but the software advantage is that once the material is written into the program, it's very easy to click it into any time signature you want. So I've actually played this material in several time signatures. So what I started with was page 38 from this book by Ted Reed called Syncopation for the Modern Drummer. Page 38 is a uh, page I know really well and I've played a lot. So I was quite surprised when I started playing in 3-4 how unfamiliar and difficult to read it was at first. Okay, uh, we're going to play some of this material uh, along with the jazz waltz pattern and the ride cymbal and hi-hat on beat two. So this pattern sounds like this. Let me put the music down. One, two, three. Of course, most often uh, the dotted eighth sixteenth figure here is played as a gaffed triplet. So this together with the snare drum line of the page 38 material sounds like this. So that's an excerpt. Next up would be uh, the bass drum. So this is sort of the next step in the independence kind of trajectory. So now we'll get the written line played by the right foot uh, bass drum. So I'm going to switch material to something I wrote called Syncopated Rhythms 1, which I wrote in 4, but as I mentioned, I was able to click into 3 in finale. Here we go, bass drum. 1, 2, 3. Another short excerpt. So now, uh, next up would be um, to do the long and short articulation so that the snare drum plays the eighth notes and everything longer is played by the bass drums. Um, another really good way to pr practice this uh, material, whether it's in 3-4 or in any time signature or back and forth, um, is to isolate a smaller chunks of it and to alternate these, um, say, two or four bar fragments with two or four bars of time. Actually, at the beginning of this video, I was doing eight bars of solo and eight bars of um, written line or written figure. So I'm going to work with the uh, Ted Reed material again, and I'm just going to play the first two bars of my arrangement of it. And so the first two bars look like that. So on the snare drum, that sounds like in, in three, four time. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Time, two, three.
why I think this kind of way of practicing is very helpful or useful. Um, one, you may have a difficult passage that just needs to be worked over. And so uh, either the independence of the reading give you a bit of trouble and you just need to work it over and isolating the passage is kind of obviously a good way to do this. Another um, reason this is a good idea, I think, is that it helps internalize the independence uh, at a deeper level. So when you're improvising uh, or comping behind a soloist in an actual playing situation, you're more free to um, draw on, upon this. Because after all, this independence gains you a lot of freedom to be able to play different rhythms while keeping another part of the rhythm going, maybe. So uh, this way of practicing, I think, uh, approaches what it might be like in a, what it is like in uh, playing situations, comping behind a soloist, etc. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Um, that's gonna, where I'm going to wrap up. Uh, I'll just do one more variation now, um, just to finish up. This will be an Alan Dawson variation on the syncopation pages. Alan Dawson had many expansions of the syncopation pages. Um, this one has he playing the bass drum, um, the written line with the bass drum, and then filling in triplets with the left hand. So in 3-4, my arrangement, this sounds like this.